I am the CEO and founder of RoboFund, and I am so here to be here with my colleague, Alicia Siegel from the Intrepid Museum. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good on this, in, at least in New York City, a very rainy day. It is. <laughs> um, so a few pieces of housekeeping. Um, RoboFund is a company that is celebrating its 25th year in existence. And we help kids love to learn by making things digital. So they make games online. Uh, you know, they program or code games. They learn how to uh, make robots and program or code those robots. We work with a very creative curriculum in Minecraft uh, using the Redstone mode where kids are actually learning things called logic gates. So they're not just like messing around in Minecraft. They're making things, but they're having to learn a lot of programming to do it. And we also do stop motion animation. Next week, we share something with the Intrepid next week, which is our kids week also, our vacation week. So you, also, you can plan a day where you drop your kids off with us. You go have fun with your spouse or go shopping or something that mom or dad wants to do. Pick them up and go over to the Intrepid for the afternoon or vice versa. So we run classes all week long, mornings, afternoons, or full days. Um, and that brings us to my speaker uh, to learn all about Kids Week. But I just want to have two more pitches for RoboFund before we get there. We also are moving to an amazing new space, which will happen in June. And that space is on 64th, between 64th and 65th on West End Avenue. Most of our summer camp will be there. And I just returned from meeting with my architect, picking out paint samples. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. My director of operations was like, I just don't wanna go back to the old space. I wanna be here now. So it will be really fun. But the topic of today is to learn all about the Intrepid. If you um, are interested, go to intrepid.org. If you are interested in RoboFund, go to robofund.org or call us and we're happy to help you register at 212-245-0444. But the Intrepid changes next week. So tell us all about it, Elisa. Alicia. Sure. Well, again, thank you so much for having me on, Laura. Um, so sure, my we pleasure. Kids Week is our annual festival during New York City Schools winter break. Uh, it runs the full week from Saturday to Saturday, and we have a variety of performances and presentations and uh, interactive activities for a number of um, different topics from a number of different educational partners, too. Uh, so we have theme days. Um, the first three days are actually going to be our space days. We're going to be hosting a number of NASA divisions here uh, to talk about things like the Artemis program and the James Webb Telescope. Um, we actually have a NASA astronaut coming as well, who's going to wow. be talking about her experience on the International Space Station. That's Jessica Watkins. Uh, and then also we've got a whole bunch of other theme days too. We've got arts and culture days where we've got performances from the Blue Man Group and Ballet Hispanico and uh, the Gazillion Bubble Show, always a hit. Um, and then we've also got a number of authors who will be coming in to do book signings. Then, as if that wasn't enough, we move on to our science and engineering days. So we have zoo animals, believe it or not. We have aquariums um, and a number of fantastic organizations, just like RoboFun. Uh, who and including RoboFun. We're going to be there next Friday <laughs> and Saturday. So. Yeah, we will be doing some maker activities and yeah. demonstrations, too. Yeah. So. We always like to say whatever you're into, there is something fun for everyone. And uh, you'll end up walking away having learned something pretty cool, too. <laughs> so I will echo that I live about 20 blocks from the Intrepid. And for a long time, just like, oh, that's the thing I pass on the West Side Highway. And then I finally went and I, I was frankly blown away. It's 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 so much. I don't even it, it's air, it's space, it's hands on. It, it's just incredible. So. Um, when Alicia and I were preparing, I was like, is it different next week? And she's like, oh, yes. So yeah. <laughs> first of all, without any of the extras, it's pretty amazing. But yeah. tell us more about the extras. So the extras are, you know, the it's the whole Sunday on top of the Sunday, I guess we could say here. Um, we joke that, the, that Kids Week is essentially our Super Bowl. Um, it is a giant, you know, it's this week long thing and it is all geared towards kids um, and really just having fun and all these educational experiences. Because like I said, they're out of school for a week. They're looking for something to do. So right. we just pull out all the stops. We invite in, you know, partners from all around the city, all around actually the country too, um, just to help expose 
expose them to all of these learning experiences. Um, you know, like I said, the zoos, right? We, I certainly cannot say that we typically have animals like kangaroos and alligators and parakeets, you know, on board our flight deck or anything like that during the year. So you're going to have a kangaroo next week? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Two by two Animal Haven is fabulous. They come every year for us. They do animal shows. You'll get to see and um, actually touch some animals too. But like I said, it's not something we normally have. Um, but I will say we do offer a number of other festivals throughout the year, kind of similar. Um, of course, we have Fleet Week during Memorial Day weekend, um, mm -hmm. kind of similar. It's, it's a little scaled down, but we do invite in performers and partners again to interact with guests. Um, we also coming up actually next month in March, March 11th, we've got Girls in Science and Engineering Day, which we love to invite in, you know, local girls um, or anyone who's in the area too, to come explore a bunch of science topics as well. Uh, and then we also have Astronomy Nights in April and September, which are also a whole lot of fun for the whole family. So we have speakers and stargazing up on the flight deck at night. It's, it's a lot of fun. It sounds like for parents who are encouraging their children to do STEM, STEAM-like activities, you pro they probably should get on your mailing list to get to know about these things in advance. Definitely, definitely. Intrepidmuseum.org. Please come, okay. you know, visit, explore. We always have all of our events on there. Um, and one of the things uh, that Alicia and I had talked about is um, how do you pay for this and how does it all work? Um, because, you know, you get all excited and you don't really want sticker shock when you get there. And she said something to me earlier that I was like, oh, so you want yeah. to tell people about the O? <laughs> There's a few O's, actually. So, sure. um so first of all, Kids Week is included with the price of admission. So there's no extra fees on top for that. Um, you can buy tickets to the museum in advance on our website, intrepidmuseum.org, um, or also in person at the box office. But yes, one of the O's is it's definitely worth mentioning that New York City residents actually get half price admission all year long. And we also offer a number of free opportunities to come. So if you are an EBT card holder, um, you can get in for free, um, as well as your guests. And uh, it's also free to CUNY students and and veterans um, and active military all year long as well. Um, and also then we, we do have a special uh, promo going on this week during Kids Week. If you're interested in becoming a member of the museum, um, there's a whole bunch of special perks all year long. But in Kids Week um, in particular, we have things like a private meet and greet with our astronaut and a members only animal show, all sorts of things like that. We have a special lounge for them. Uh, so we are running a special promo during Kids Week. If you use code KW2023, you can get 20% off your membership for all year long too. Wow. Wow. So just this is um, kind of a sneaky question, but having been there and met, there's one of those rooms where you are literally there are plate glass windows looking at the Hudson River is do do members get to see that room? Is that the lounge? That's actually, yes, where our lounge will be this year. Uh, it's, it's a lovely space. Um, there's actually a few rooms that are kind of like that that we offer for um, special events, too. So if anyone's interested in booking a wedding or, you know, a special conference or something like that, you can rent out different areas of the ship, uh, the Space Shuttle Pavilion, all sorts of different areas like that. Okay. So it was a very risky question because I was like, oh, no, what if the lounge is some dark and dingy? Because it <laughs> is. I mean, we should go into the history of what the Intrepid was when it was an active ship. But this room is unbelievable. <laughs> so the price of the membership is almost worth it to be able to go and sit there and just look at the Hudson River. It's quite a quite a room. Yeah. So, um, so actually, that would bring us into two things. What is the history of the Intrepid? Sure. So the Intrepid itself, uh, it's the former USS Intrepid. It is a naval aircraft carrier. It was constructed um, back during World War II. In fact, the keel of the ship, the very bottom of it, was laid just uh, just a few days prior to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. So really? that, of course, is what brought us into the war. Um, and I always like to add that, you know, at the time, all those men were whisked off overseas to go fight. And so it left the ladies behind. And a lot of women actually constructed the Intrepid, believe it or not, even though they never served on board. Uh, so it was estimated to take quite a long time, but they were able to get it into shape very quickly. Uh, it served throughout World War II. It served also during the Cold War, uh, during 
during the space race, we picked up two space capsules as well, which is our connection to space. And then um, also through the Vietnam War as well. So a very rich history. Um, it was decommissioned and then um, kind of sat dormant for a number of years until uh, it was uh, bought to be, you know, turned into this museum, which opened in 1982. So we just celebrated our 40th anniversary last year. Uh, and this wow. year is actually the 80th anniversary of the ship itself. So a lot of cool anniversaries going on. Uh, and we yes. love to have you that. <laughs> yes. So one of the things that I think prevented me from going to the Intrepid earlier is how the heck do I get there? I know how to drive my car along the West Side Highway, but I got a little intimidated. And so can you tell um, my, our audience how what are the easy ways to get there, both public transportation and if you have a car? Sure. So, you know, by virtue of the fact that it is an aircraft carrier, we are floating. <laughs> we are a floating museum on the water on the Hudson River. Um, we are located um, at Pier 86. So that is the intersection basically of 12th Avenue and 46th Street. So, yes, as you were saying, if you're ever driving down the West Side Highway, you might see this giant gray looming thing that says Intrepid on the side. That's us. Uh, but if you are you know, taking public transportation, it's really not too hard to find, for sure. Um, the closest subway would be the ACE on uh, the at 42nd Street or, you know, really anything um, in the Times Square area. And then you just walk west until you can't walk west anymore and you hit the water uh, and you'll see us. Um, also, you could take the seven train to Hudson Yards. We are just north of there. That's a, a lovely walk along the water. Um, and there's also a number of buses that go through there too, Crosstown buses. Uh, the, the M50, I believe, actually stops right in front of the museum. Uh, so okay. you can do that. Or right. So, so that's the thing to do is to go to Google Maps because for those of you, you will have a lot of walking on the Intrepid, so you might want to save your feet. Um, so get a bus directly there, um, or, you know, you could also cab it from whatever subway line you get off of, something like that. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what if you're driving into the city? How, how do you suggest people handle that? Yeah. So, well, aside from handling just New York City traffic in general, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, we are right on the west side there, right on the west side highway. So it's an easy zip up or down wherever you're coming from. Uh, and there's a number of parking uh, garages and areas in that uh, vicinity as well. Right. And I've done that and it worked perfectly. That's great. All right. Um, so you have a very unusual background for the work that you do. And in our prep interview, I was like, wow, what a cool field. So <laughs> Tell us a, about what your your uh, your title is and how you found what it seems to me that you love. So. Sure. So, um, so I guess I'll go into my background a little bit first. So uh, my, my title now is the producer of public programs at the Intrepid Museum. But my background is... A little unusual, I guess, maybe for museums. A lot of times you hear people, you know, are very into science or they're very into art uh, or, you know, preservation or something like that for museums. My background is actually in theater uh, okay. as well as science. I did a lot of very high level competitive science fair type stuff uh, when I was in high school. Uh, I interned at a lab and I actually really loved the research aspect of it. But I also really loved the communication angle of explaining mm -hmm. science too. Yeah. So um, I ended up majoring in drama and psychology at NYU. And after graduating, you know, I, I pounded the pavement. I auditioned a lot, did little, you know, shows and then things on TV and things. Um, but while I was looking for a day job, something steady, I fell into museums. And the opportunity to perform in museums, specifically doing um, theater that's based on history and science for school groups. So one thing led to another, um, and I had the opportunity to start researching and writing my own pieces that are based on primary sources, um, you know, about amazing underrepresented women in history and, and scientific topics, um, and just creating whole programs for curriculum and for summer programs and things. Uh, and I just fell in love. You know, it's such a unique little bubble, um, museum theater and, and science communication. But for me, it was a really perfect blend of my passions. Um, so yeah, I was in a few museums doing work like that prior to coming to Intrepid. And then ultimately I hopped on board here to um, create and deliver an outreach program, uh, working with students to create their own performance pieces that are based on primary sources in our collection. So wow. I did that. So the I students, your high school students are doing that? 
Uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, middle and high school students. Okay. Uh, we experimented with very young kids, but that got a little bit rowdy. <laughs> um, but absolutely, yeah, it was um, a grant funded through the National Endowment for Humanities and a number of other very generous donors. And um, yeah, that ran for a few years. Uh, really, really exciting. It's it's wrapping up now, unfortunately. Um, but it was a very rewarding, very interesting experience to be able to work with those kids and, and really get them to focus on things like finding empathy in history and just ways that they can uh, bring to life really the stories of you know these people and these experiences um so it's doing that pandemic hit of course you know everything pivots online um but i really actually found that i enjoyed doing stuff like this you know online work too so um i pivoted our family programs online um and i was essentially i, I joke the face of the museum for you know two times a week <laughs> through the whole pandemic um so it's been a little bit of a ride but it ultimately led me now to what I'm doing here. Um, so as the producer of public programs, I help to organize, you know, our large scale events at Kids Week uh, or, and Fleet Week and, you know, all these other things, um, astronomy nights. Uh, we also actually, I forgot to mention, we have free um, Friday summer movie nights as well over the wow. summer. So we're bringing those back, come enjoy movies on the flight deck. Um, but I also now produce and host our virtual programs too. So a few times a year, we offer this cool like behind the scenes tours of, of something special in our collection. Um, in the past, we've done things like the Concorde that we have out on the pier or uh, the submarine Growler, or actually my favorite, the Space Shuttle Enterprise inside of it, which is a cool site that nobody ever gets to see. Uh, so our next one of those is March 30th. We are going to be exploring the bridge of the Intrepid. So up on those upper decks um, where they did a lot of the navigation and things like that. Um, and we'll have former crew members actually uh, who are going to be joining us too, to really kind of give a, a cool glimpse into what's going on up there. And then our other big thing, if that wasn't enough, um, is our monthly virtual program, Astro Live. So each month we pick a topic, something going on or something interesting in the world of space. And we chat with experts from NASA and other companies who are doing super cool things because, you know, it's not just NASA these days. Everyone's getting into it. Uh, and we actually recently spoke with someone who worked on the Orion capsule that just went around the moon. Uh, we've spoken with astronauts and scientists working on you know, space habitats and the Mars helicopter, all sorts of things. Um, but it really gives our viewers a chance to just geek out. It's very laid back. Um, they have access to these people. They can ask questions uh, and learn. So, so much fun doing that. Um, our next one of those is Sunday, the 19th. We're actually going to be streaming it live from Kids Week uh, with our astronaut, Jessica Watkins. So really looking forward to that. Um, you'll get to see that live and in person if you come on Sunday. Uh, and yeah, and then I, I guess we kind of mentioned this too before, when we were talking before, that wasn't enough. Um, I also still do theater periodically at the ship. So this past October, I just launched my latest performance. It's a 20 minute one woman show about Betty Skelton, who was the first woman to undergo the Mercury astronaut test in 1959. And she really helped to pave the way for women in the American space program years later. So that happens periodically up in the space shuttle pavilion. Uh, but I will also be doing it during Kids Week on the 22nd, if you are curious. So come on by for that. So I would love to see that. Is there a way to know the schedule? Uh, yes. So the schedule for all of our Kids Week events are on the website, intrepidmuseum.org. I think you put that in the uh, yep, in the chat there. Yep. Um, it is, it's very clear how to find that on the website. So yeah, if you go there, you can actually see a breakdown of each different day. You see all of the partners who are joining us in uh, booths doing all sorts of engaging activities like RoboFun, uh, including RoboFun. And then also we have our stage demonstrations. So the 12 o'clock slot every day is uh, from our own in-house education. Uh, education team. Um, that's also where I'll be doing my Betty Skelton performance on the 22nd in that slot. And then we have our other partners coming in doing performances and uh, speaking presentations and things. Fantastic. So if you're a child who loves a lot of different things, this is an, or the, you're the parent of a child, this is an amazing thing. Now, I just want to say, if you're a child that have, hey, maybe has sensory issues and it's a lot, what I would suggest is coming really early in the day. Is, is that true? 
But yes, we do find that um, the crowds start to come a lot more uh, starting around noon. So okay. if you do have sensory issues, definitely um, the morning is going to be a little bit quieter, a little bit lighter. We also have a number of tools. Our access team is amazing. They have a number of things like noise canceling headphones and fidgets and things like that that you can um, check out from the front desk. Um, and I also want to mention, too, um, thanks to some really generous grants, we have a number of extra supports um, for people who need it, too, this year. So we're actually going to be having American sign language interpreters on site for three days. Um, this is all clearly marked on the website as well. So the 19th, uh, the 23rd, and the 25th, they'll be on site doing sign language for all of our presentations. Uh, and then also on the 22nd, we have an audio describer coming. So people who have low or no vision um, actually can also enjoy all these presentations through the use of a, a, a hearing loop. So they can actually hear you know, all these presentations described uh, in real time. So we're really excited to be able to work with those supports as well. That's 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 great. That's amazing. So um, I don't have any further questions for you, um, but I, I'm going to throw one at you because I know you have an acting background, and so you can, you know, um, tell us about an experience in your childhood that really made you just go, "I love science." Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, I have wonderful memories of, you know, growing up going to science museums. Um, I originally I grew up in Pittsburgh. So the Carnegie Science Center is amazing. And it's only gotten even more amazing since uh, since I've gotten older. Um, but I, I always loved kind of, you know, digging in the dirt and just getting getting gross outside. That's really my vibe. <laughs> um, and uh, I just I just always found science really fascinating. Um, when I was uh, in middle and high school, the, the school that I went to, I moved to Orlando, so the school I went to there um, had a wonderful science research program that I got involved in, and they helped to pair us up with um, labs and, you know, just science facilities in the Orlando area. So I had the opportunity to work um, in in labs, and actually I did things like RT-PCR, you know, before everyone knew what that was with, with the pandemic. I was actually doing things like slicing rat brains and, you know, doing electrophoresis and all of these really crazy, you know, just out there techniques as a high school student, which was right. so cool. Um, so I've always loved just research and everything. And that particular um, opportunity, being able to do science fair and all of that, um, when I was uh, a senior in high school, I actually, I won uh, the International Science Fair first place and I got an asteroid named after me, <laughs> which is the coolest thing I think ever. So that for me, I think was also really um, pivotal in, in and just having my brain be like, whoa, I'm part of the universe now. Like, this is real, you know? And that's something I still think is so important for kids to, to realize, you know, having these opportunities to meet astronauts and be like, whoa, they're just like us. Or, oh, I could do that. You know, right. we love having Jessica Watkins in particular. Um, she is she's a woman astronaut, first of all. Amazing. We don't have enough of those. I think um, only about 12 percent, I think, of all people to go into space have been women so far. So that's wow. important. But also she's African-American, which is really, really an exciting thing, too. She's only the fifth African-American um, woman, I think, to go into space. And she also um, just recently uh, broke the record now for the longest time at the International Space Station in space as uh, as an African-American. American woman too. So Black History Month, obviously that's great timing to talk about that too, but all year round, you know, just being able to be able to see yourself in these amazing role models and, and doing these cool things. I think that's what Intrepid is really here for, to just expose students to these engaging activities on site, you know, things that they can get their hands dirty with uh, and just learn more about in a fun way. This has been a remarkable interview. And I, I am so happy to ha to share this with my RoboFun audience. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to have RoboFun uh, get more involved in the future too. We've got so many other fun things coming yes. up. Yes. So I want to just recap to remind you, it's all of next week, the <coughs> the 18th to the 25th. Yeah. The um the day for for girls is November. Excuse me, March 11th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that you do have free events and lots of online events. So. Yes. And also, um, I'll say as well, if you do have, you know, maybe a daughter who is interested in, in STEM and getting more involved, we also have a wonderful program that's recruiting right now for students for the summer called Goals. 
Uh, it stands for Greater Opportunities Advancing Leadership in STEM, I think. Uh, it's run through our youth leadership program. Uh, and it's it's a five week program this summer uh, that allows uh, women or young girls to get involved in STEM more. They get to, to meet people who are working in the field. They get to go in depth, learning a bunch of different science concepts from space to aviation to engineering, all sorts of different things like that. Um, so if you're interested, again, everything you can find on our website, intrepidmuseum.org. You can find out information about how to sign up for that uh, or, or to apply for that. Um, but then we also offer, you know, like I said, a number of different ways to uh, just come out, explore uh, different different opportunistic programming that pops up throughout the year. That's great. W what age is that program for? So that is uh, geared towards middle school students specifically, okay. um, really as they're kind of, you know, starting to to learn more about these topics and, and it also develops their leadership skills as well. Again, we really lean into the social emotional learning too, um, because that really is so important, you know, just to link up with everything that we do. And where do we find, is the asteroid called the Alicia asteroid? <laughs> yeah, uh, so you can actually find it on um, the JPL database, the the, the, Jet, the NASA Jet Propulsion um, site. Um, it is, gosh, if I can remember this, it's I think it's 17795 Alicia Siegel is actually this. And you can see the pathway that it moves <laughs> around, which is really wild to me. And I was always joking like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if an asteroid hit us one day if it was me? <laughs> it's not, though. It's so far away. They specifically give the ones to high school students that are far away that won't be causing any problems. <laughs> OK. All right. So I'm going to wrap up and I'm going to let everyone in our audience know that RoboFun also has a really big week next week for three to 13 year olds. We have programs in the morning. We have programs in the afternoon. We all have lunch together in the middle. Um, and if you go to RoboFun.org, you'll find out about that or call us at 212-245-0444. Speak with my colleague Noah Diamond at extension 107. And we're getting ready for an amazing move to uh, West End Avenue between 64th and 65th. But for now, we're in an amazing space as well on 102nd and Broadway. So have a wonderful day. And Alicia, I think uh, what you did so well may mean that you're going to come back in a couple months, <laughs> if you're willing. So. Oh, thanks so much. It was great talking sure. to you.